Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. So a couple weeks ago, Cameron got in touch with me and asked how we could replicate this type of effect um, on this hat. So this week I want to show you exactly how to do it and it's a very, very quick and easy effect to replicate. So as you can see on my screen, this is the final outcome uh, that we're going to make in this tutorial and I've kind of got three different variations because we can stop right here and replicate this hat that Cameron found, um, but I, I kind of want to take it a little step further and add some color gradient as well as the variation in the line um, that's creating its own type of gradient right here. And then on top of that, to maybe stack text and also apply it, which um, is very similar to what we're doing here, but when you have two lines of text, how to make that continue on through two lines of text. And then finally, having that gradient, but also setting a color behind it, which is just one extra little step um, that's important to know about if you want to do that. So we're just going to jump right in, and I'll show you exactly how to do this, and it's going to be quick and painless and wonderful. So to get started, I'm using two kind of default colors that come in Illustrator. So if you go to your swatch palette, if you don't see this, you can Get to it by going window swatches right here and if you don't see this right here all you have to do is toggle this down and choose open swatch library and then default swatches and then print and that's it okay so you'll get this and the, these two that i'm using it's this one right here and then this one right here so these are the color builds i'm kind of hovering over um, so all we're going to do is hit m on your keyboard to activate your rectangle tool and I'm gonna hit I on my keyboard and just color drop that first and then hit M. So now I'm gonna draw a rectangle that's, that is this color. So I'm just totally freehanding it and it's gonna be really skinny. And then I'm gonna hit V on my keyboard so I got my selection tool. Then I'm gonna hold Alt and as I'm dragging, I'm gonna hold Shift and this will keep it straight. If I don't hold Shift, it can go anywhere. If I do hold Shift, it keeps it straight. So holding Shift. Uh, giving it a little bit of distance and afterwards then I'm just gonna grab this node click and drag it up and just make this a little bit thicker don't go too crazy um, because I'll explain later but don't go too crazy all right so we're gonna color this bottom one this orange color so with it selected I'm just gonna hit I on my keyboard to activate my eyedropper click once for that color or click in your swatch palette over here we'll do the same thing hit V on your keyboard your selection tool is back and now we've got these two really boring rectangles so now we're gonna create that line gradient and we're gonna do this using the blend tool and the blend tool is over here kind of in your toolbox and it's this icon right here and all I want you to do is double click on that. When you double click on that you get this little dialog box and it's very very important. Um, I think when you first open this, this is the default, the smooth color, but that is not what we want. We want to make sure we have specified steps. And for our text, uh, this first example that we're going to use, I'm going to keep it a little lower. Um, so let's do like eight steps and then hit OK. And then all you're going to do is hover over. You can see a little X appears when it, it's kind of grabbing that shape. And click on that one and then hover over the other one and click. And now just like that, we've got a nice little gradient. But as you can see, the gradient starts to come together down here. And if we want a little more separation, it's very easy to do that. With this selected, all you have to do is come up to here and go Object, Expand. Hit OK, and then we're going to ungroup, and you can do that by hitting Command Shift G on a Mac or Control Shift G on a PC. So that ungroups it. I'm going to click on this bottom shape, drag, hold Shift to keep it straight, select everything, and then up here I'm going to click on this vertical distribute center, and that'll just give me a little more space if I need it. So I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to group them again because I always want these to stay together. So I'm going to hit Command G or Control G on a PC and that will group them together. So now we've got our little line gradient that we're gonna mask into our typography. So this font that I'm using, it's I would stick with um, kind of a thick cap font, um, or you can use any font and just set it in caps, but I would make sure that it's a little heavier in weight. Uh, if you have a thin weight font, um, you're not gonna be able to see the definition of these really beautiful lines that we've already created. If we went through all that work, we wanna make sure we show it off. So this font that I'm using is called Evolith, and I will leave it in the video description so you can go and pick it up if uh, it's a font that you like. I love this font because it's all caps and it's got these really nice soft edges, so I use it quite a bit. Um, and this 
setting is clean regular it also has a clean thin which is really nice to to pair the two together all that said uh, i'm just going to type out tuesday so i'm going to click i'm going to hit t on my keyboard click and then i'm just going to type out tuesday uh, this font is an all caps font so no matter what um, cap or no cap it's always going to look like caps so i'm just going to expand this up i held shift as i dragged uh, that node and now that i've got my word I'm just gonna go type, create outlines, and this will create shapes out of that. So now it is no longer editable. I can't uh, change this word at all. So now that I've got shapes, the very, very important thing that you need to know is we need to create a compound path. And I've talked about this before in past tutorials, if you've seen them. And if you have, you know that that means that when we mask something, when you have a bunch of different shapes like we hear, we do right here, um, obviously all of these letters are separate, they're not connected, but they need to act like they are connected because this gradient needs to be masked within the entire word. And if I don't create a compound path, I'm not gonna get this masked into anything. Um, so creating a compound path makes the entire, all the shapes act like they're one shape. So I'll show you what I mean. Uh, I'm just gonna make a copy of this. I'm holding Alt as I drag. And then since all these are rectangles, it's really easy to stretch them out. All I have to do is click the center node and drag. And now it's the full length. It's really important that your gradient is behind your text. So if it's not, just have it selected, right click, arrange, send it back. All right, so I'm gonna position this so I'm and drag that right there and this thin line it gets really weird if you have it sitting right on the very top of uh let me zoom in here on the very top of the letter because you can see you get these little slivers showing and that looks really ugly after you mask it so i would just drag it down just a little bit further see how it's where it is on the e that's where i would keep it so you don't get any weirdness up at the top so um if i were just to grab all of this um, like we do with a mask you need to grab your texture and you need to grab your type so kind of rubber band select both and see I don't even get the option to create a clipping mask here because it's it doesn't make sense to have both of the these without that compound path but um, let me show you what will happen if you don't make a compound path uh, I can go object clipping mask make and this is same way you can do it by right clicking but nothing shows up because it doesn't know where to go because there's a bunch of shapes but we haven't told it which shape or that all the shapes are supposed to act as one shape so let me undo that now if I click on the text and I hit Command-8 or Control-8 on a PC, that just creates a compound path. And now if I select everything, right clip, right click, make clipping mask, there we go. And it's beautiful. All right, so it's that easy. And we're gonna do this exact same thing again so we remember exactly what to do. So it'll go really well. Um, if you wanted to create this effect right here with just the black stripes, let me um, show you how to do that. I would just grab all these lines, just change in black, select everything, make clipping mask, and there you go. And if you wanted them um, to go from the top instead of the bottom where the, the weight is heaviest on the bottom, kind of over here with this example, um, the heaviest weight is up at the top. So I can do that by selecting my gradient here, right clicking, transform, reflect, horizontal, then if I select everything, make clipping mask, there you go. Um, so that's how you would replicate this effect over here, but we are not doing that. All right, so the next example, just moving right along, we're gonna do this on two levels. So let me type it out again every Tuesday. This is called letting the space between your lines and it's gigantic right now, so we need to fix that. So I'm gonna come over here to my character palette. You can get to this by going window, type, character if you don't see it. And you can see I've got Evilith. Um, so this is where your letting is right here and it's huge. And usually um, when you're in smaller sizes, you wanna keep at least two points higher than your text size. So I'm just gonna put in 46, whoops. That's not 46. All right, so that looks good. And I'm just gonna move with this. So let me make it a little bit bigger. All right, just like we did before, type create outlines. Now this is all a shape. I'm gonna hit Command-8 or Control-8 on a PC to make this a compound path. 
And if you get annoyed that you can't see the text, um, all you have to do is hit I on your keyboard and I drop or a color, and it's still a compound path. It will always be a compound path unless you right click and choose release compound path. So it's fine to color that in if you want. So I'm gonna grab my gradient again. I'm gonna hold Alt just to make a copy of that. And this time I'm gonna flip it. So right click, transform, reflect, horizontal. And now it's flipped and I can drag it down a little bit and then drag it across. Make sure it's behind your text once again. If it's not, right click, arrange, send it back. Rubber band select everything, right click, make clipping mask. And there you go. As you can see here, the lines are really far apart right here and that looks pretty ugly. Um, so if you wanna change that, you can just make a new blend. Um, so if I ungroup these, Command Shift G or Control Shift G on a PC, I can select all the middle, the guts in the center. And now I'm back to these two shapes. And if I come over here to my blend tool, before I was using eight steps. And if I increase this to like, I don't know, 14 steps, and then blend it this way. Now I've got more steps, so the transition um, is more gradual. So I'm gonna expand this again, object expand, hit okay, ungroup, command, sh command shift G or control shift G on a PC, grab this top shape, drag it up. As I'm dragging, I'm holding shift, give it a little more space, select everything, and then click on this vertical distribute center icon, command G or control G to group them together again. And now if I bring it over here, you can see if I mask this all again and rubber band select and mask, that's a lot nicer. Um, a little more gradual, you can see the letters a lot better because your eye can make up where the parts are missing for the most part, but when you leave too many gaps, then it's harder for your eyes to make up that space. All right, so this very last example, I'm just gonna type it out and it's really good. Um, we can do this one more time. So we remember everything every Tuesday. I'm gonna keep it on one line. Make this big. Whoops. Moving too fast. All right, we've got our text. We're gonna type create outlines. So this is a shape. And then I am going to hit Command-8 or Control-8 on a PC. Now we've got our compound path, which is really important. I'm gonna eyedropper a color. And this is all good, but every time we mask something, as you can see, there's no color behind it. So we need an extra copy of this in front. So we need two of these, one to use as this mask for the line gradient and another one to be this color. So we need two of this. And the way we can do that is select it, Command C or Control C on a PC to copy it. And then you're gonna hit Command F or Control F on a PC to paste another copy of that right on top of the other copy, right on top of the other one. All right, next thing we need to do is grab our gradient, stretch it across, Make sure it's behind the text. Let me make sure my top doesn't get weird like we talked about before. Right down, that looks good. All right, so now um, my gradient is selected and I only wanna select one copy of the text. So I don't wanna rubber band select this because this is selecting everything. So I'm gonna select my gradient then I'm gonna hold shift and I'm just gonna select the type just once. So this is actually grabbing one copy of the text and the gradient. And I'm gonna right click, make clipping mask. As you can see, it kept the orange back there. If I ever wanna change the orange color, since the gradient is on top, on my top layer, all I have to do is click the top layer, hold shift, and then rubber band select everything. This will deselect the top layer and select the bottom layer. And as you can see over here in my color, it's showing the color of that background color. And if I come over here, I can change the color. And that's pretty cool. And that's that. And I would just um, group everything when you're happy with it. That way you don't accidentally move this off of it and then you've got to struggle to try and realign everything. So I would just you know, select everything, Command-G or Control-G to group it and keep it together. You can set um, a nice background behind it if you want. If we put 
black there. Um, that's kind of cool. You could also, with these ones that we didn't have a background on, uh, the black kind of fills it in, which is cool. This one, you've got this two levels of color, and this one, you only have one. So that's that's pretty. It feels very summery, like sunset-ish. All right. So that's how to create linear gradient or line gradient typography in Illustrator. Super quick. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And make sure you head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com, for a bunch more tutorials and a load of uh, design freebies. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.